Welcome back to Reading the Bible to Cats and a, I think within the parentheses we'd say impromptu Bible study. Um, we're going to jump into Exodus 32. And by the way, thank you all for praying. <laughs> I appreciate the prayers. Um, I'm going to read from this book from this Bible. It's the uh, Archaeological Study Bible, New International Version. Here, I'll, I'll pan to it. Ta -da! And we're going to turn to Exodus 32. And here's a picture. Keep that in mind because it'll, we'll, um, I may read the note. And there's Henny sleeping. Okay. Maybe we should pray before reading. Sorry, my camera is shifting. Um, Lord, I ask particularly for, as I pray, um, that you would give me insight because although I've read your word before, obviously, um, as I'm reading it afresh, I'm kind of confronted with my own ideas that I have about you, or I guess I would say preconceived notions that when I read your word, um, I have to confront my preconceived notions because your word sometimes militates against them. <laughs> if that makes sense. But I really want to know you more deeply, even though I know you're Spirit is, your Holy Spirit is in me, but I ask that your Holy Spirit would give me uh, wisdom and insight, and also um, that you would, anybody who's listening, that you would help them through your Spirit understand the truth of you. Okay, pray these things in Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name, amen. Okay, so we're going to read Exodus 32 and try to read Luke, part of Luke 22. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because your people, whom you brought up out of Egypt, have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. O oh Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky 
and I will give your descendants all this land. I promised them and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God, engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, There is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, It is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf they had made and burned it in the fire. Then he ground it to powder, scattered it on the water and made the Israelites drink it. He said to Aaron, what did these people do to you that you led them into such great sin? Do not be angry, my lord, Aaron said, answered. You know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Mo Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold and I threw it into the fire and out came this calf. Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so become a laughingstock to their enemies. So he stood at the entrance to the camp and said, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Each man strap a sword to his side, go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. Then Moses said, You have been set apart to the Lord today, for you were against your own sons and brothers, and he has blessed you this day. The next day Moses said to the people, you have committed a great sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold, but now please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. The Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place I spoke of, and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. And the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. Okay, that's the end of Exodus 32. That very famous passage of the golden calf. Um... I'll show you a picture uh, in this archaeological uh, study Bible of the bull statuette found at Ashkelon. Who knows, maybe, maybe the golden calf looked something like that. Um, I'll just read a little bit of this note. It says, sorry, there's a little mosquito buzzing around me that I'm trying to slap. And my battery's about to die, so I have to be quick. In art and legend, gods... This is not the Bible, it's a study note. In art and legends, gods were frequently represented by animals thought to symbolize the attributes of a particular deity. In the overall religious experience of the ancient Near East, for example, bulls and bull calves were associated with strength, virility, and kingship. The bull was regarded as the earthly form or representation of the heavenly God embodying physical strength and the procreative powers power found in nature. Several religious cults in Egypt, that of Apis being the most prominent, worship the bull and calf. Deification of a live sacred bull was initiated during the first Egyptian dynasty and continued 
throughout ancient Egypt's long history. Bull cults of the Nile Delta, which existed at the same time and location as the Israelite sojourn in Egypt, were dedicated to Horus, the god of heaven. Um, and then it mentions that the Can Canaanites also venerated bulls and uh, yeah, so that's the, con the historical context of why they wanted a, a calf. They got impatient, but um, you know, I'll just read Exodus 32 and then I'll I'll read um, Luke 22 probably tomorrow because my battery is dying, but this was a very heavy chapter and um, if you've ever watched an old Cecil B. De DeMille movie, <laughs> you can imagine the, um, the cinematography. That was a, a famous movie. I think it was the, called The Ten Commandments, but they depict this scene in the movie, and I know other movies have as well, but um, yeah, it was kind of, it's kind of a difficult passage. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that, but here, let's close with a prayer. Uh, Lord, thank you that We thank you for your um, first covenant <laughs> and for the Torah, for the Hebrew scriptures, for how you revealed yourself through history. And we thank you for the new covenant through the Messiah, through Jesus, so that through him and your spirit, sent to us and given to us, we then become the temple, your temple. What a great honor. So help me as I journey through your Bible and as anyone else comes along with me and journeys with me, help us to understand. And um, help me because I guess I have preconceived notions about what I would expect you to be like and sometimes when I read the scriptures you're not exactly like what I would expect you to be like um, especially like when you became angry with the people which makes sense Moses then became angry but I guess the point is as the New Testament tells us, sin leads to death, but that's the whole point of Jesus coming to redeem us and save us from our sins. He was our substitute. Anyway, help me and bless everyone who listens. Pray these things in Jesus' name and Yeshua's name, amen. All right, goodbye.